today, um, 215 unknown uh, and inexplicable events from the standpoint of UFO. And this is important because it's an admission that the phenomenon exists, of course. Um, their present approach uh, is uh, to handle the problem with a certain care, but not to deny it. This is extremely positive. Um, probably they prefer that uh, other people um, may find the right clue to explain the problem. And it's what, what we are trying to do, of course, uh, on a, a volunteer basis, of course, but it is so. Uh, another interesting thing is that recently um, we could uh, check um, some old documents. Um, they are uh, um, documents from uh, uh, the, the 30s. And uh, um, these um, documents uh, refer, um, are linked mainly to sightings in 1936. And they show that uh, even the fascist government at that, po at that moment uh, was uh, handling with the problem of UFOs. The story is this, we received uh, from an anonymous source these documents and had the problem of checking everything from the standpoint of history of documents and um, above all, uh, we had to add these documents analyzed uh, from a chemical uh, uh, and historical point of view. Uh, the result was positive, completely positive. In fact, uh, we um, gave also these documents to the Italian Air Force in order to have uh, also their opinion and uh, uh, to see if they knew nothing uh, more about this. The answer that, uh, was that they know nothing more, but in any case, uh, yes, uh, the documents are uh, authentic. The conclusion uh, was that uh, uh, during the 30s, uh, uh, Italy was involved uh, um, with the sightings of uh, unknown aircrafts. And at that uh, moment, Mussolini was very embarrassed and uh, really um, Mm, had problems because uh, um, the idea that uh, uh, the um, Italian power in the air, because of the Italian Air Force were, was a really um, uh, very, very important at that moment, uh, well, uh, th this could even uh, lead him to, to change his foreign pol policies, of course. Uh, because uh, he, he feared that uh, uh, these uh, unknown aircrafts m might be English or French, of course, but uh, they were not, <laughs> obviously. Uh, by the way, um, uh, there are cases uh, um, of uh, elongated objects, uh, like we see in the UFO cases today, expelling uh, um, lesser, object, uh, lesser um, uh, un identified flying objects in the form of uh, the classical flying saucer. And um, this um, sighting, for instance, occurred in the sky of Venice, and we had the two fighters of the uh, Royal uh, Italian uh, Air Force at the time who tried to intercept the objects, in vain, of course. So, um, in other words, there is nothing new under the sun. But this is important because it proves uh, what we always thought. That is, that uh, the UFO sightings uh, began much before 1947 and everywhere, of course. In uh, 1978, we uh, obtained for the first time um, an official dossier of uh, uh, Italian Air Force documents. We requested them uh, um, according a certain definite procedure. It was not easy. But at last, uh, we obtained them. From the standpoint of the nature of uh, the uh, sightings, uh, the uh, Air Force documents uh, show that uh, we are facing definite objects, uh, that these objects uh, are detected by radar, and that uh, uh, military pilots uh, had encounters in the skies of Italy, exactly like uh, elsewhere. And uh, um, when the Italian Air Force says that they have 215 cases still unexplained, 
means that they are UFO uh, sightings uh, uh, which uh, have uh, um, unknown characteristics. For instance, uh, there are cases of uh, jet uh, military planes intercepting these objects in the skies of Italy. Mm. And uh, normally these objects uh, go away uh, without the possibility of being intercepted. Mm. All this, uh, um, if we had also the, the problem of traces, for instance, uh, there are also... Um, you mean landing? Yeah, landing traces. And uh, all this, uh, mm, this is a very mm, delicate uh, subject because uh, mm, just a few admissions are made by the military about this. But if we consider that even their forms, their uh, blank forms uh, about uh, the UFO subjects uh, show a lot of uh, parameters which are mm, really defined uh, at uh, the very minimum extent, uh, you understand that uh, what is written there is surely part of the cases they faced, because otherwise they never would have put uh, such uh, uh, details uh, on the forms. So um, sometimes uh, the documents speak for themselves. <laughs> First time we succeeded in half a century to have as a, a guest uh, an official delegation of the Italian Air Force uh, which came to our UFO Congress uh, with other 16 foreign delegates to speak officially and in uniform about the UFO problem. The speaker was uh, um, General Olivero. Uh, at that time uh, he was uh, still a colonel, <laughs> but now he's a general, and he is the chief uh, of uh, the intelligence uh, uh, office of the Italian Air Force, which is uh, um, charged also to follow the UFO cases, of course. Colonel Olivero was um, sufficiently um, careful in uh, saying uh, certain things and not saying certain other things. But what is important that he said that the problem exists, that the Italian force is uh, handling this uh, difficult uh, thing since 1978, that they have uh, on file uh, at least uh, 215 uh, UFO cases, that they are still uh, controlling the Italian airspace in order to uh, control the situation from the standpoint of UFO, and that really there are unexplicable cases. Uh, besides, he was also um, uh, asked officially by the press what uh, uh, he thought of on a personal uh, uh, basis, and he said that uh, as uh, a pilot, since he is a pilot, he had known and he knew uh, and he knows uh, serious colleagues, serious pilots, who really had encounters with UFOs and he said, I trust them. In the, in the 90s we had uh, two different cases in Italy uh, they both occurred in Campania. Campania is uh, uh, the region near Naples. And uh, uh, we had uh, mm, two different landings. And uh, the landing traces left by these two different objects uh, uh, were uh, analyzed in a laboratory by our experts. And uh, uh, we uh, got certain results. Uh, that is, uh, we discovered that uh, the objects, after their landing, had uh, really um, bombed the uh, surface of the soil with microwaves uh, and uh, with high intensity, high, fre high frequency microwaves. Uh, we could check and uh, um, define this, uh, this uh, effect. So, uh, we could uh, um, compare and uh, confirm in this way uh, the world famous case of Trans en Provence in, uh, uh, in France, uh, which occurred in 1981, and uh, which is a classic from this uh, point of view. 
uh, it was very important because when we went to Toulouse and we confronted the data, we saw that the effects were very similar. And this was very, very important. Uh, we had good relationships with the French, even if uh, uh, they are a governmental body, of course, and our organization is a private one. Mr. Velasco is the head of the governmental uh, body who, uh, who, sti stay, who studies the UFO problem in France. This is important. What has he concluded? Does he, do, do, do they think this is real or fictitious? Excuse me? Do they think that the phenomenon is real or fictitious? No, no, no. The, no, no, no. The, the approach of Velasco is extremely positive. They think that the problem is real that we are having, we are um, com confronting a real phenomenon, a technological phenomenon of unknown nature. The position of the French is extremely open and extremely realistic. The possibilities of UFOs are much uh, superior than we think. Really, um, probably it's uh, it's hard to say that, fly, uh, that uh, uh, unidentified flying objects uh, uh, fly. What does it mean, fly? Uh, we, a, pl a plane flies because it has a sort of importance. But uh, probably uh, UFOs use another kind of propulsion and uh, for them it's absolutely the same to, to proceed in uh, fluid like uh, uh, water or uh, an atmosphere like ours or the atmosphere of another planet or even the vacuum, the void. So it's uh, a quite different kind of propulsion and uh, even the cases in our seas show this. We had a lot of uh, cases of uh, pilots in Italy, both civilians and uh, uh, military. Uh, who really had these encounters. For instance, in 1973, we had a very famous case. Three planes were involved over the airport of Turin. And um, at present, uh, um, one of these uh, three pilots is still alive. In fact, we succeeded in having uh, him uh, as a guest in the San Marino Symposium. Um, uh, this, this man, uh, the name is Traquilio, and uh, was one of the um, pilots of the three planes involved. We had um, um, a sighting of from three different planes and from the tower of the Turin airport. Besides, the object was also on the radar screens, so it's very important. Um, after this object uh, took off and uh, went toward France and uh, so the story was over. But uh, um, all the Italian newspapers mentioned this case uh, because uh, the witnesses were uh, not only the pilots but also a lot of people uh, in the, on the ground. Uh, something like uh, a, a flying luminous egg, something like that. Um, another important case was uh, the case of uh, a general, uh, now he is uh, no longer in the Air Force because uh, uh, General Salvatore Marcelletti in 1976, yes, um, when he was uh, the, um, the chief of the um, flight school of the Italian Air Force in Lecce, um, happened to, um, met, to meet a tremendous object, imagine he was flying and he could suddenly, he suddenly saw a green light over him. He just raised the eyes towards the high and saw an incredible line, a curved line, green, of a big compact object over the cockpit. And he understood that something enormous, huge, was over the plane. He, he didn't know what to do. Seconds later, minutes later, he d still doesn't know <laughs> how long this experience lasted. He saw uh, suddenly this mass took off with a tremendous speed. Mm, he didn't uh, um, check this uh, object on the radar screen. Asked without mentioning this sighting to the tower if they had anything strange on their radar screen. They hadn't. 
but he saw this. And uh, in fact, only when he left the Italian Air Force, he, uh, of course, mentioned this uh, event. If we consider, um, from a statistical point of view, all the cases we are facing, surely um, I think that uh, a good half of uh, these cases may have some different uh, origins. But uh, a good half is surely linked to a technological phenomenon of unknown uh, uh, nature and of unknown technology. If we have to try to explain all this in uh, practical terms, I think that still the extraterrestrial hypothesis is uh, uh, the hypothesis which is able to explain more than any other hypothesis what's going on. Besides, if we consider that the UFO cases uh, um, can and must be compared, we still see definite patterns in these cases. And this is extremely important because uh, this means that uh, the UFO cases have uh, a sort of, uh, have, have their own uh, um, rules, their own uh, um, particular uh, characteristics, uh, their uh, own uh, um, patterns. And uh, if you, you see that these patterns lead us to think that unknown beings, humanoid in form, um, and of unknown origin are visiting us much before the 1946, I think that really the only possible explanation is the extraterrestrial hypothesis. From a logical point of view, I don't think that uh, we have nothing to, to fear because uh, uh, if uh, we uh, would face uh, hostile uh, beings, well, surely they would have conquered us or made uh, incredible things uh, um, in the past. They could, really. Uh, if uh, this didn't happen, surely is because uh, we have nothing to fear. I think I don't say nothing new, saying that uh, uh, probably there is, uh, every uh, in every part of the world, uh, probably with invisible links, uh, a definite invisible college, we may call it so, <laughs> even if uh, this expression were used in a different sense by Joseph Allen Hynek, uh, which is uh, uh, facing this, sub this subject from the standpoint of research um, secretly in order to have gains and technologies to be applied in a quite different uh, uh, approach. Mm, because the problem is that uh, um, people don't understand the very important things. I think um, the UFO problem is not only a scientific problem, it is also an intelligence problem. This is the second important phase of the UFO reality. And we uh, when we begin to understand this, we may understand a lot of things, because uh, all this has to do with power. Power everywhere, in every country, in every, with every government, with uh, every situation. Don't worry about it, folks. He said that's all spotlights. But well, being an idiot like me, I jump and I said, Colonel, I said, what do you mean spotlights? There's no clouds. There's no beam of light coming from any place, and you're telling us it's spotlights? And he told me to shut up. And just then a bird colonel jumps up, and he says, I knew the bird colonel, because that's why I knew he was the bird colonel, his name was uh, Miller. He jumps up, and he says, Colonel, he said, you shut up. 